is a big transition and can be pretty overwhelming. So how does a person actually go from living a more traditional life to living on the road full time? Van exposure should be the number one priority for anyone considering moving into a vehicle. And when I say exposure, that means grabbing a mattress, throwing it into the back of your van, renting a camper van for a weekend, going on a road trip, anything to get your feet a little bit wet and expose you to non-traditional housing for at least a couple of nights. Lottie and I didn't start off in the van that we are now. We had a lot of previous experience traveling in other countries in a van. So Lottie lived in a Toyota Hyus for 14 months in New Zealand. We traveled in a van through New Zealand, through Australia, Germany, uh, Italy, and then through 10 countries in Africa in an overland expedition vehicle. That's where I lived for 16 months. So we had seen all of these other layouts and ways of camping before transitioning into full-time van life. It doesn't all just happen in a vacuum. Once you have a few exposure trips under your belt, you'll likely come to one of three realizations. Number one, this is not for me. I didn't enjoy myself, but no regrets. Number two, that was awesome. I want to do it again, but not full time, maybe seasonally, or I can get a van for weekends. And then number three, I fell in love with this lifestyle. I want to do it permanently. How can I become sustainable? So let's look at the logistics of number three by breaking down all the things you'll need to do in order to achieve that goal. I think the lookout's up here. It's really important to understand why you want to live this way and also define your goals. So for Lottie and I, we've always tried to prioritize hiking, biking, photography, and general like adventure. We're both really into minimizing expenses and being submerged in the natural environment, but these will vary for everybody. The benefit for us is that we're able to stay on location, sleep on location, not be able to have to deal with all the rigmarole of getting to and from the lake or trying to make sunset on time. Instead, we're able to dig our feet in and then once the sun goes down, we can hit the bed. Van life aside, this is what it's all about for us. Once you know all of your goals, you can start downsizing. So when I was living in Minneapolis, I had a one bedroom apartment that was completely stuffed with stuff. And eventually I got rid of just about all of it to be in the van that we have today. The process of downsizing can be scary, especially when you're getting rid of so many things so quickly. However, it's really, really worth doing. You can either 
rent a storage unit or you can ask your friends and family to hold on to a couple of totes for you while you start to transition over. If you're worried about finding a storage unit, we live in the future. Type in storage unit on Google Maps and it will bring you just there. The process of transitioning from a home to such a small space will take some time. So understanding that the transition will take you a while to rid away all of your stuff is also key. It took me six months of actively downsizing to get for all of my belongings to fit in my van now. <laughs> um, and the van itself for us, the build, took three months of 16 hour days and no weekends. So it is a big transition. It is a lot of work to set it up. It's not like you can just decide I want a van life and it will happen the next day. Find the beauty and the fun in the process and it makes the whole thing so much easier and a complete blast really. Remember, it's never been easier to start van life than it is right now. every dollar like because because we minimize expenses with this lifestyle and truly believe that small living is the future we can be experiencing places like this that are completely free just because we're not paying rent done your exposure trips you've decided you want to be full-time you've defined your goals you've started to downsize you need to look for a vehicle and that is the biggest one question you need to ask yourself is do I want to be standing or am I fine with a small van is this the pond no way that can't actually be it. A standing van is obviously better if you're full time because it's much more comfortable. I think a smaller van is really good if you wanna do weekend trips or you're a part timer, but it really all comes down to your preference and price. So ask yourself how long you think you'll be doing it and if you require standing up like we do because we're tall. Do you like my pond? <laughs> that van life photos on Instagram are basically like family photos on Facebook. You have everybody standing and smiling at the camera. That doesn't exactly explain how Christmas went, right? The same with van life, where I can take a photo of myself eating at a beautiful location. And while that was real and, and lovely, that does not explain how my entire day went. Don't expect my five minutes to apply to your entire van life experience. also made a video how to build a van start to finish that you can check out. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. In my opinion, if you are drawn to van life, it doesn't make sense to be sucking it up for 10 years in an office just to build a portfolio. 
You are the youngest that you will ever be right now. If you're someone in your 20s and you're thinking, I'll delay this until I'm in my 30s, I can promise you, you'll have built so many boundaries for yourself that you'll have to overcome by the time you get there. The best time to start is now, and you meet so many amazing people along the way. And those people can also help you grow. You'll have a lot of time to self-reflect and it fast tracks your personal development. So even if you're done with van life after six months of trying it, you'll come out the other side with a new outlook, a new perspective, and a new idea of where you want your life to go. That was crazy good and it totaled exactly $3.50. I don't know if we'll live in a van forever. I've heard a lot of people saying that once we have kids, that all of the outdoor adventures will stop. But I actually think that we're more inclined to just get a bigger van and customize it for a family. But because we're not in that position, I don't know. It's not like if you enjoy a lifestyle now that you have to enjoy it forever. You are obligated to nobody. I know that this lifestyle isn't for everybody, it really couldn't be, but you might not be like everybody. You might be like us. And if you are, I can tell you it's the best decision that we've ever made. If you are curious about what our expenses look like on a day like today, we totaled $35, which is a, roughly about $1,100 a month. That's including our accommodation, scooter rental, two meals at a restaurant, and fruit for the way back. <laughs> so thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more informative videos, which is try, what we try to focus on on the channel, you can check out our how to build a van like from start to finish. And then you can also see our awesome e-bikes, which we miss every time we pop onto that scooter. All right. I'll see you in the next video.